You know, hitting a golf ball is easy and the game is fun. And that's really what this series is going to be all about. Hi, I'm Bob Kurtz. You know, I covered the PGA Tour for over 10 years, and it was exciting watching all the great players, the way they struck the ball and shot those 64s or 65s, but they really are not indicative of the average golfer. Statistics tell us that the average score that is shot in the United States for men is 23 over par. For seniors, it's 24 over par. For women, it's even higher than that. So in our series, we want to show you how to break 90. Now, why are the scores so high? Well, I think it's because of a number of reasons. Essentially, number one, it's a bad attitude, a bad approach to striking the ball. All kinds of negative feelings come in. That's number one. Secondly, a poor short game. And then, of course, on number three, we have disaster. You know what disaster is all about. You're playing a, a hole and you take a six, seven, eight, or nine. You usually have two or three of those on each nine holes. Well, that is exactly what we're going to deal with, those three things. And with me to help on this series is going to be my daughter, Beth, whom you see behind me striking golf balls, who is a fine young woman player. And uh, actually, that helps perhaps even more because we might learn more from watching women players. I'm talking about us fellows watching a good woman player, watch, uh, learn more from them than watching some of the pros who hit the ball so strong and so far. So let's start with number one the attitude, the fear that comes within us, the negative thoughts, and learn that really hitting a golf ball is easy. Now watch what I'm talking about. Hitting a ball is easy. You know, watch this. We tee up one golf ball, and we tee up another golf ball right next to it. That's two golf balls. Now, we're going to hit those two golf balls with the club. Why? Because that's how big the golf ball really is. Look at this. You can hit it on the toe and strike that one, and toward the heel and hit this one. Here we go. surprising, isn't it? What it really means is that the size of a golf ball is, in reality, about the size of a softball. You've got a target about that big to hit. Now, why do the good players, like Beth behind me, swing so easy and so confidently? Because they know that. Hitting a golf ball is easy. The target is large. Stop and think. How many times have you stood up to a dandelion, made this great smooth swing? Or there's a broken tee on the ground. Same thing. You look at the broken tee. Nobody has ever missed a dandelion or a broken tee because you're confident. You make that smooth swing, and then all of a sudden they put a ball in front of you, you tighten up. So that's what the first part of this series is going to be about. We want you to relax. We want you to clear your mind, make smooth swings, get rid of all those negative fears, and sort of to paraphrase Julius Burroughs, what we want you to do is clear your mind, swing easy, and hit hard. Let's do it. if this is you over the golf ball. Let's see. What you say? Uh, I want to get my grip, my left hand over a little bit. Let's see. The right hand goes up. The V points at the right cheek or is it the right eye? Let's see. Right shoulder back. Tilt from the waist. Bend the knees. Hands forward. Oh, head down. Well, the point is, of course, that the game should be fun and the swing should be a lot easier than that. You cannot be thinking while you're standing over the golf ball, obviously, or something like that would happen. What we want you to do is to get all your swing thoughts together when you are behind the ball and then just walk up, go through a little simple movement, and then head it dead straight. Now. The principles that we're going to talk about are very simple, and I'd like to bring in my daughter, Beth, and introduce you to her, and we'll talk about those swing principles. Beth, would you come in here now? Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about hitting a golf ball straight because this little thing <laughs> hits the ball very, very straight. We were playing together in uh, Sebring, Florida in the Mixed Team Championships, and the only time this sweet young thing has ever gotten mad at her dad and what it was, we were playing the Chapman system, which means I was playing from the back tees, she was playing from the up front ladies tees. But 
I was hitting her tee shot and she was hitting mine. I was having fun. I was playing from the dead center <laughs> of every fairway, having little wedges. And where were you? I was behind trees, in bunkers, in grass, in bushes. Be behind <laughs> pond trees, in the swamps. She had been places she had never been before. Well, about animals I'd never seen. At about the 14th hole, she says, Dad, would you please just put one ball into play? Well. The point is that Beth hits the ball very straight because she is fundamentally sound and she does a couple of things that I want to share with you. Three points. One, good grip. Two, good setup. And then three, pre-swing routine. First, the grip. Of course, that's so important. If you're going to hit the ball straight, keep it in play. Now, we're not going to be involved in a lot of V's and angles, but we'll look at Beth's grip. The back of her left hand is facing the target. In fact, the back of her left hand and the face of the golf club are exactly the same angle. Whatever back of her left hand does, the golf club does. That's how she can maneuver. That's how she can hit it straight. So remember, keep the back of your left hand at the exact same angle as the face of the club face. All right, now put your right hand on it, Beth. Now the right hand lays simply on top of the left hand, but notice the palm of her right hand is facing the exact angle as the back of her left hand. So the ball is going to go straight. The hands are taking it, take it back very, very slowly. Notice how our hands work together so beautifully because the back of the left hand, the palm of the right hand are exactly together. Now, I don't care if you use overlap grip, interlocking grip, grip it with a baseball grip, whatever you do, but just do that. Keep the two hands working together, and that will get you started on the first part of the basics, and that is a good grip. Take a look at Beth and pay close attention. Okay, Beth, go ahead and hit the ball. Nice shot, nice shot. Okay, now we're gonna move to uh, fundamental number two, and that is address position or setup. Okay, address the ball. High ball! Now, everybody says that we're not gonna do, we're not gonna use cheap jokes like that, are we? No, not as we're above that. Now, notice, in the setup, simple things. Beth's head is behind the ball, on this side of the ball. Her hands are ahead of the ball. Okay, head behind, hands ahead, her feet are square, her hips are square, and her shoulders are all square to the line of flight. That's the simple principle that you have to do. Now, don't have the right shoulder set up over here like this. Have the hands behind the ball. You've seen this kind of position. Just remember, the chin, go ahead, set up properly. Mm -hmm. The chin is behind the ball. The hands are in front. Okay, go ahead and hit it, Beth. Okay, nice shot. Now, the next most important thing, the third fundamental, is what we call a pre-swing routine. Did you notice when Beth hit that last shot that she kind of waggled a little bit before she did? That's what we're talking about with fundamental number three, pre-shot routine or pre-swing routine. In other words, you cannot swing from a stationary start. About five years ago, Beth learned it from Bert Yancey, who is an excellent, excellent teacher. And it stayed with her. In fact, it was so good that when I mentioned to her the other day, and it's such a part of her routine, she had trouble figuring out what her pre-swing routine is. But it's two waggles, and then she goes. So watch her. Go ahead. Start your pre-swing routine, Beth. One waggle, two waggles, puts the club down, takes it back, and hits it. Okay, now watch. She did that while I was talking. Nothing distracted her because she had a pre-swing routine. Go ahead and hit it again, Beth. She walks up to the ball. She sets the club head down. One waggle, two waggles, and she hits it. Okay. Wouldn't you like to be able to hit like that when people are talking? But go ahead, do it again. Pre-swing routine, same thing. Sets the club down, one waggle, two waggles, sets it down, and hits the ball. Three shots, dead solid, perfect. Now, what we want you to do is work on your grip. Very, put a lot of emphasis on your grip. Make sure that the back of the left hand and the palm of the right hand are facing each other and working together. Work on that. Get a good, solid grip so you can play the game. Then work on your setup. Make certain that your right shoulder is back, that your chin is behind the ball, and that your hands are in front. That's all you have to remember. Then work on a pre-shot routine. Whatever it is, one waggle, two waggles, three waggles. Gary Player starts it with a kick of his right knee. Whatever it is, get it going. Practice it in front of the mirror. And then when you go out and hit balls, even, with, even on the practice range, use your pre-shot routine. So your mind is clear. Now, when you start to hit a golf ball, you stand behind it, you look at the shot, you walk up to it, you've already got that perfect address, perfect setup, one waggle, two waggles, and hit it. And every shot will be dead, solid, perfect. You may not even break 90, you may break 80, you may break 70. Who knows what you can, sh you can shoot. But the game will be a lot of fun.
Now you're ready for that first tee shot. You're thinking properly. Uh, hitting a golf ball is easy and the game is fun. You line up behind the golf ball. You see the shot and you walk up. An excellent address position. Right shoulder back, chin back, hands in front. A couple little pre-swing moves and then you slice the ball. It's there in the woods. It's out of play. You're ready to throw your club, kick the dog, scream at your wife, because now we have arrived at the number one problem in all of golf, what perhaps keeps more golfers from breaking 90 than any other thing. We're talking about the all-time ugly, the El Stinko, the dreaded slice. Now, how do we cure that problem? Now, if we cure that problem, you're going to love me, you're going to be nice to your wife, and you're going to stop kicking your dog. How do we cure it? Well, a lot of people try a lot of different things. They say, well, I've got to close my stance, get my right shoulder back, get the ball back in the stance a little bit, or I've got to turn my left hand over, my right hand under. Well, the thing is that you can do all those and you still can slice the ball. Why does a golf ball slice? One simple reason and one reason only, the club face at impact the club face is open. So all you have to do to cure your slice is make sure that the club face is closing. Not closed, but it's closing at impact. We're gonna show you how to do it. We're not gonna do it with the driver. We're gonna take a little wedge and show you how to close the club face so you can be rid of that dreaded slice forever. And you'll love me for it. We're not gonna use the driver. We're gonna use the pitching wedge. And we're going to use the wedge because it's easier for you to see the ball in the air and also to see a smaller swing. The principle is still the same. We want the club face closing at impact. Not closed, closing. Okay, let's tee up the ball and see how we're going to do this. All I want you to think about are the thumbs. And I want the thumbs up after impact. In other words, you come through the ball, and your thumbs go up. See how they're up? Right here. The thumbs are up. Now, usually what happens, the way, the reason the club face stays closed is because when a person swings, watch my hands. The back of the left hand stays looking up at the sky. The thumb is pointed to the ground. Now, if the thumb goes up, the club face closes after impact. That's what we want you to think about. So, from here, the thumbs go up. And the swing goes out. and a pretty little draw on that ball. Would you like to hit that about 250 yards with a draw that pretty? Let's do it again. Now remember, all you're thinking about is the thumbs up, right here, at this position. Just go through the ball and thumbs up. Let's hit it again. See if we can see how pretty it's gonna be. What a nice little shot. One that we'd like to have all the time. So. If you want to get rid of the slice, it's easy. Remember, it's the sign of thumbs up to be a happy hooker. Well, are you ready to play around the golf? We're gonna show you something very interesting. We're gonna play the first three holes here at Fort Armor, but before we do, a word about our hero, Arnold Palmer, everybody's hero. But Arnie probably has done more to, uh, to hurt the average golfer than anybody because of his huge, powerful swing. I remember a few years ago, I was playing an exhibition with uh, Arnold Palmer and Dave Hill back in Colorado. We came to the third hole. It was a brand new course. All of us had hit, and it was up to Palmer. There was a lake in front of the green on this par five, and uh, Palmer says to Dave Hill, he says, what should I do? And Hill says, what should you do? You're Arnold Palmer. Go for it. Well, of course, that's the way you feel about Arnie. That's the way he's always played. Played with determination, with charisma, but mostly with power. Now, here's an important word about power. If you want to break 90, you need precision and accuracy a good deal more than power. All of us would like to hit the ball 290 yards, jump out of our shoes, have our right foot drag like Greg Norman. Well, you need that if you're going to shoot 62 at Glen Abbey like Norman has. But... To break 90, you just need to keep it in play. And to illustrate that, we're going to play the three tough holes here at Fort Armour. Three, the first three holes, very difficult, with just three clubs. A putter, obviously, 
a pitching wedge, and a seven iron. And let's just see exactly how we score, all right? Okay. I feel like Bill Murray and Caddyshack. We need a 290 yard drive. Must be a seven iron. Yeah, we won't hit it. We hit about 150. And we're off. Now, the first hole here at Port Armour is 370 yards. It's uphill. It's a par four. 370 yards. I hit the first shot 150 almost exactly because I stepped it off, and I'm 221 yards from the pin. Not going to get there this time either. Okay, we're off again. I don't know if I like being a short hitter or not. Anyway, we were 220 away, hit it 150, got this little 70-yard shot. I'm using my pitching wedge because that's the only other choice I got. That's a little right. Oh, got a good kick, though. Let's see what happens, okay? Not bad. We'll tap that in for bogey. I really missed my point. The point is that you should be able to be putting for a par on every hole if you can hit the ball 150 yards. We just barely missed it by leaving that shot short, but we chipped up and we made a bogey. So let's go on to the second hole, which is a very, very tough par five. Hmm, second hole is a 500-yard par 5. Now, this is going to be a little tougher than the first hole because there's all kinds of trouble on this hole. It's got a split fairway. There's water in front of the green. There's a swamp a little bit to the right. We've uh, got to be a little bit more careful here. But let's take our trusty driving 7-iron and see what happens. And we're off again. This was not a good tee shot. I only hit it about 140 yards. Didn't quite catch it. But 7-iron keeps us in the fairway. Here we go again. That's a little better. Let's talk. Okay, we got, a, we got a little bit of a problem here. We're between 175 and 180 yards out. Now, if we could use another club, we could put it on the green. But uh, you can see all the trouble that's in front of the green. So because we can only hit a 150 or so, we're going to have to go left and then use the wedge and come up. So we'll hit this one a little bit left. Should be good. We have to admit that that may be just a little bit better shot than we're usually typical of hitting. But the point is well made. Even if it wasn't this close, we would have been on the green somewhere in this area putting, maybe 10, 12, 14 feet for par. At least we had a chance to make par. We were on the green in four, but it turns out that we have a pretty easy par right here. Boom, how about that? Next hole of par three. We're doing pretty good, aren't we? This is the third hole. It's a 140-yard par three. Now, first of all, I have to admit that the last hole surprised me a little bit. We're going to play these first three holes. I thought I would go bogey, bogey, and I figured I could get a par here, so that would be two over after three and show you that you could shoot 42 or break 45 easily on nine holes just using a seven iron. But we got a little lucky on the last hole, so let's see what happens here. This is fun. We can make this putt be even far after three. Make the birdie here. Let's see what happens. Even if we don't, we're in still pretty good shape, aren't we? A little fast downhill. In fact, a lot fast downhill. Break toward the water. Oh, we'll slow down. Turn in. All right. Ah, nice little three. Oh, we got a par, easy par there. But anyway, our point is well made. We played three holes, a 
medium-sized par four, a good par five, and a short par three. And we finished one over par with, uh, with one bogey and two pars. Actually, that's a little bit better than I intended to do, but you begin to see the point, can't you? That if you can keep the ball in play, stay out of trouble, it's surprising how low you can shoot if you begin to scramble well. When I first started Beth playing golf, that was the point I made with her. In fact, because she was a girl and because she was young, could hit the ball very far, I would play with her from the members' tees. I would use just those three clubs, a seven iron, a pitching wedge, and a putter. And four different times I shot 78 on a pretty good golf course. So the point is well taken. Remember, keep the ball in play and even if you don't have the power of Arnold Palmer or Greg Norman, if you can hit it straight and hit it at least 150 yards, there is no hole made on this planet that you can't be at least on and putting for a par. <laughs> was that the rigged? First I ever beat. <laughs> was that rigged or not, huh? I don't think so. But the point is, of course, that power is important in life, and it is important in golf. Now, we just showed you that you really don't need it to be able to break 90, but all of us want to be able to hit a ball just a little bit further. Now, that can be done through three points. Now, Beth is a girl, and uh, I have to admit that she really can't beat me in arm wrestling, although she's getting stronger. And I wouldn't even say that Beth is an extraordinarily strong young girl. Would you say that? Not a bit. My mom can beat me arm wrestling. But Beth hits a golf ball well over 200 yards. And that's what we want to discover. How can this young lady uh, strike a golf ball much further than the average man? What would you say are the sources of power? I think power it has three sources. It would be weight shift, shoulder turn, and wrist cut. And when you combine the three of those, you'll get the greatest club head speed, which is what is the result of power. Okay, well, why don't you show us and start off with the uh, weight okay. shift. Okay, I'd love to. We hit some drivers. That's the one I hit over 200 yards. <laughs> the only one. Okay, when I talk about weight shift, you start off and your weight is fairly central. When you take your club back, you want it to all, the 90% of it, to get to your right side. In order to get to your right side, you don't want the weight coming over the outside of that right foot. It needs to stay planted on the inside of that right foot, yet all be over on the right side. Now, a common error with, with men is they get it over with their body, and they get a reverse pivot. Women, because our weight is central down in our lower hips, often get this move. So when I'm talking about weight shifts, I don't mean this, and I don't mean this. I want 90%, almost all of your weight shifted right, but keeping it with your knee planted, your foot planted, just get that upper body over to the right. Let me demonstrate on a swing. Nicely done. I think the second half to weight shift is that once you get it all shifted to your right side, remember it all has to go back to your left side at impact. When you see all your great players at impact, they're here. All the way, they could pick up their right foot. It's the exact mirror opposite. It goes right, and then it all goes to your left side. Okay, that's excellent. So, first thing is weight shift, then is shoulder turn. Now, you're making an excellent shoulder turn on your backswing, but what happens with so many people is they just make an arm swing. They might shift their weight, but their arms are going. Look at the shoulders. The shoulders aren't turning. Tom Watson says that his back feels like it's to the target. Your shoulders turn all the way around. Your hips go 45 degrees. Your shoulders go 180 degrees. They're right here. So when you make the weight shift, make certain that your shoulders are turning at the same time. And then, Finally, you said the third point of uh, power is? Wrist cock. Now, wrist cock is a tricky little subject. Many people think that cocking your wrist is a move this way. But the correct wrist cock is actually a cupping of the wrist this way, going up and down. So when you take the club back, it will cup right here. And this will stay solid. Your wrists do not break this way. It's almost like the putt where they stay solid. They stay solid and they cup and cock right there. That gives you a real consistent, solid swing that's going to hit the ball straight and powerful. You've got all this wrist cock built up. You can really go through the ball quickly. Oh, you did go through quickly, and that's what the answer is. You want a lot of club hit speed. You want to build it up oh, as much yeah. as possible. So, weight shift, good shoulder turn, and wrist cock, and you are on your way to hitting with enormous power, just like this powerful <laughs> example of well 
structured womanhood. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I said, go ahead and strike the ball. Weight shift, shoulder turn, and wrist tap. 